How's it going everyone? Johnny Superb Man here, and Edmonton Oiler fans, this is going to be a rough take, but you gotta hear it. Connor McDavid has officially entered the second half of his Edmonton Oiler career, which is wild, right? I mean, it feels like yesterday that this guy was drafted, coming into the league, lighting it up, but no, he's been there for six seasons now. He's not a rookie, he's not a veteran, six seasons. So when we take a look at the Edmonton Oilers season history, I mean, going back to 2006 when they lost in Game 7 against the Carolina Hurricanes in the stand like a finals that pretty much put them into the dark ages 10 straight years of missing the playoffs but in 2013 14 sorry 2014 15 they did get themselves Connor McDavid all right arguably the best player in the world now in his rookie season he got injured they missed the playoffs but in his sophomore year they got all the way to round two game seven about up against the Ducks so if you're an Edmonton Oilers fan after two seasons oh hell yeah we got McDavid he got as far the future's looking great but it hasn't gone that way has it the next year, they miss the playoffs. The year after that, they miss the playoffs again. Last season, they don't get the automatic buy-in. They got to go to the qualifying round, only to lose in four games against the Blackhawks. And this season, even though they had a great regular season in a pretty crappy Canadian division, not a single victory against the Winnipeg Jets in round number one. Connor McDavid has one playoff victory in the last four seasons. And he's now officially in the second half of his Edmonton Oiler career. You can't be looking at the future anymore, Edmonton, and thinking, oh, this is gonna be great. There's a time limit now. There's a window frame that you guys have to work within. So I wanna show you guys the salary cap situation for the Edmonton Oilers. And it's it's not looking good, man. I wanna show you this. So the 2021 season is what we're currently in. Edmonton is gonna start up next year right here, right? McDavid's got himself one, two, three, four, five seasons to go. He's played six. He's got five more to go. You're in the second half. Now, there's an unwritten rule with unrestricted free agents. If you can convince Connor McDavid to stay by turning the seasons around and you extend him, then you got no problem. But if you keep on having seasons like this one, right? Seasons like the last three. How are you going to convince this guy to stay? Now, with Seth Jones currently right now, he has publicly declared that next season he is going to test unrestricted free agency. Seth Jones will have one more season to, one more season to go, the 21-22 season at 5.4 million dollars. But he's already basically told the Columbus Blue Jackets that, "Hey, I'm not going to re-sign an extension right now. I want to test free agency." So what are the Columbus Blue Jackets going to do? Right. This is the new this is the new unwritten rule that the player uh, with one year left before he becomes an unrestricted free agent has all the leverage. Yeah, uh, Columbus now has to make the decision. Do we hold on to him and go for a run? Hope that we can resign him. Or do we flip him right now with one year left to try to get something back? They don't want to lose him like they did Panarin and Bobrovsky. Right. And. Uh, and you can apply this same mentality to the Edmonton Oilers. So even though he's only got five years left, what if it's four more seasons of really bad hockey? Are you going to convince him to extend after that? What if he decides, I'm going to test unrestricted free agency? Well, guess what, Oilers fans? That means you have four seasons left. You got four more years to turn that sucker around before you maybe have to trade him. Now, again, like I said, if you can extend him, you got no problems. But why would he want to stay there after season after season of failing? And it even gets worse, Edmonton. Leon Dreisaitl, all right, 1A, 1B, his line mate, his go-to guy. He's only got four years left. And if we apply the Seth Jones mentality of player leverage, not signing the extension the year before unrestricted free agency, you got three seasons. You got three seasons to convince Leon Dreisaitl that Edmonton has a winning formula. If you can't convince him, how are you going to convince Connor McDavid to stay watching Leon Dreisaitl go? You're going to hold on to Dreisaitl and let him walk? You're going to hold on to McDavid, let him walk? They got three seasons to go here, boys. All right? The 2023-2024 season. Edmonton has got to get it worked out by then. Now, where's the help? Because this is the problem that I see with the Edmonton Oilers. I mean, McDavid, Dreisaitl, fantastic. You got to sign Ryan Nugent Hopkins. All right? There's a lot of unrestricted free agents this year because of the coronavirus. They didn't decide to go in Taylor Hall with Buffalo GMs weren't handing out money so it's going to be interesting to see how much Ryan Nugent Hopkins decides to sign for I think he's going to stay in Edmonton right so there you go you got three good players James Neal now this was the trade for Milan Lucic that's signing my god you still have a retained salary for that James Neal not a great season for him he's making close to six million dollars per what did he do this year in 29 games played he had 10 points a minus two in the playoffs he started two games all right there's six million dollars that is just 
just not being used for anything. And when you have these two top players making that much money, I mean, you can't be throwing around $6 million on a nothing player like that. Zach Cassian, I got no problem with. He defends the guys. $3.2 million well spent. Alex Chason, I think they're going to part ways with him. Kyle Turris, not a good season. $1.6 million. Josh Archibald, I got no problem with. Uh, uh, Jujar uh, Kara. Un, uh, a restricted free agent. Are they going to bring him back? Jesse Puglia Harvey had a very big season. This might be the key to Edmonton turning it around in the next three seasons. 25 points in 55 games played, all right? So, all of a sudden, McDavid, Dreisaitl, Nuge, if Puglia Harvey signs, you got four there, right? Uh, Tyler Ennis, meh. Dominic Calhoun, I know he played with Dreisaitl. He didn't have a great season. Haas, Kyler Yamamoto, that's one that you're going to have to get back. He's an RFA. So you got McDavid, you got Dreisaitl, you got Nuge, all right? You got uh, uh, Puya Harvey, you got Yamamoto, you got some forward core, but that's five players. What about your bottom six? Who you got there? Who you got coming up in the system? And you got all this cap space that is devoted to guys like James Neal. To me, that's what the Edmonton Oilers need to do. They need to fill out that bottom six. They need to get themselves some really good contracts. When you look at their blue line, Darnell Nurse has got one year left before you got to re-sign him. They got to get him signed based on the season that he had. How much money is he going to ask for? Adam Larson, are they going to bring him back for this season? Chris Russell, $1.25 million. I mean, what the hell? At 34 years of age, could have freed up some cap space there. Tyson Berry. And now, Tyson Berry is an interesting one because the season he just had, 40 assists and 50 six games played 48 points in the playoffs again no wins do you bring him back he's gonna want like north of six million after a season like that north of five million if he takes a team friendly contract so then you got darnell nurse you got tyson berry ethan bear up and coming i mean where's this blue line i don't know about philip broberg i don't know about evan bouchard are they going to be able to become legit nhlers by the time like i said three years Three years, right? So their blue line needs some support. I know they had the injured Oscar Clefbaum with shoulder sur surgery. He should be back. So they, he's got a pretty good contract right there. But then you go to the goaltender situation. Thank you for this, Shirelli. Miko Koskinen, he's still signed for another season at four and a half mil. Mike Smith was the go-to guy. But at 39 years of age, is he going to be able to hold the fourth down all by himself? Their team is a mess. They're still paying Milan Lucic. Uh, uh, three quarters of a million for the next two seasons. Andre Sekera, he's at 1.5 million for the next two seasons. Jeez, Louise, this team is all over the place, right? So Edmonton Oilers fans, what the heck are you going to do to turn this team around in the next three seasons? Because you got to do it. You got to convince Connor and Drysidle that this team can win, or they're going to be gone. You don't have four years. You don't have five years. You got three years coming, right? And to me, let's just add up some of these contracts. We're going to lowball it just so I don't go over to the top. James Neal at five point seven. All right, Turris at one point six. We'll call that seven mil right there. Uh, Archibald can stay. He's all right. Pull your Harvey. Don't know what they want to do with them. Seven mil. Uh, 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 Russell will say eight mil, right? Ethan Bear, that's fine. Eight mil. Go down to Miko Koskinen. Eight mil. We'll go up to twelve mil for that, right? Twelve million dollars. Milan Lucic plus Sekro. There's another two mil. That's fourteen million. Thirteen, fourteen million dollars of cap space that you could use on upcoming free agents that you just have tied up, and those contracts aren't going anywhere, right? So how are you going to turn this sucker around in three seasons? I want to show you guys. I don't know if you got prospects up and coming, but there is a very deep, unrestricted free agency, uh, 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 what's it called? Free agent list, I should say, this upcoming offseason, all right? Now, I think a lot of these players, because of the coronavirus, like I said, just decided to not extend. A guy like Gabriel Landeskog, with the way Colorado's playing, you got to think that he's going to stay there. Tyson Berry, uh, and we're, we're sorting by UFAs for point totals, Tyson Berry. He's up there with 48 points. I got to think he's coming back, but that's a lot of money right there, man. David Krejci's not going anywhere. Ovechkin's not going anywhere. How about a guy like Dougie Hamilton? Hasn't re-signed with Carolina. Could he be a big top-tier defenseman that could go to Edmonton and turn things around? Don't know if they can attract him there. Don't know if he wants to go there, right? But there you go. You got something. Taylor Hall, imagine him going back. Zach Hyman, Alec Martinez. You can go down the list. There's certainly a lot that I think they could fill their bottom six out with. But it's got to be free agents. But how much cap space do they have, right? So Edmonton Oilers fans, I'm going to put it to you guys. How do you turn this sucker around in three years? Is it even possible to turn this sucker around in three years? Because you have to think about that time frame, that window. You have 22, 23, 24 to convince these two guys to stay. If Dreisaitl decides, I'm going to test unrestricted free agency, you can't let him walk. You got to trade him. And if you're trading Dreisaitl, McDavid's gone. Three years, Oiler fans. What do you do? Let me know, 
and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, Johnny here and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, and make sure notifications are on so you don't miss out on any new content. We also live stream on Twitch where I take days off my life for your entertainment. Sonny Gray, get out of it. You stupid pieces of shit. I should have gone with Jose for Nandez. Oh my God, pitching change. Fernandez, get your ass in there. Oh, I swear to God, baseball God just decided to shit all over me. Grand slam, oh yeah. Make me miss the playoffs with a first ranked team. Year two, 30 games above 500, no divisional win. Trip to the wild card, first inning.